Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Well, good morning and happy Easter to everyone. Um, as always, I have a few announcements. Um, not too many. Um, the children's Sunday school uh, met today. They had their Easter egg hunt, so I'd like to thank all of those who filled Easter eggs. Uh, we appreciate that, and the, and the kids certainly had a lot of fun. Um, our next children's Sunday school class will be in two weeks. So um, we plan on um, meeting like every other week for uh, at least for the springtime and see how, see how it goes. And then the plan is to meet out, outdoors. So, uh, so again, in two weeks, we'll have another outdoor Sunday school. Uh, we did complete um, a church directory without pictures. Um, so there are some copies here. We can print more, and then I will email them out later this week. So if you're on my email list, or if you'd like to be on my email list, uh, just let me know. Uh, so we'll, we'll get those out. So that just has names, addresses, phone numbers, and some emails as well. So we have those ready now. Um, and thank you to uh, Dawn who put them together. With Lois's help. With Lois's help, yes. So thank you to both of them for putting them together. Um, and I think that uh, the only thing else I could think of is Bible study meets again this Thursday at um, 7 o'clock. And we're in the uh, Book of Romans. Uh, so we're, I think we're in chapters 6 and 7. I think it's 6 and 7. So, um, but please join us. I, I try to do the Bible study that it doesn't matter if you've missed any, missed any week. So you can come in person or uh, through Zoom. And I think those are all the announcements I have for today. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Okay, well then we prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude. invite the congregation to please rise. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. first reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the first reading. Let's be to God. Please read responsively Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which in turn you received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you, as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still, who are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, 
because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Here ends the second reading. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seen them, had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's message. I think we can fit in this front pew. You want to sit down? All right. Thank you. Well, as you all know, today is Easter Sunday. But before we get to Easter Sunday, I just want to back up a little bit and talk about what happened before Easter. Okay? So do you remember, what was last Sunday? Do you remember that? Last, what was it? No, last Sunday. You're close. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. That's right. I didn't. So Palm Sunday was when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem. And people at that point were happy to see him. They were waving branches and putting them on the ground. And while he was there, he, he did several things. And one of the important things that we're going to do today is he gave us the gift of Holy Communion. Okay, we remember that day last Thursday. And then what happened last Thursday? Uh, just two days ago, last Friday. It was called, what's that? Good Friday. Good Friday. And what happened on Good Friday? Uh, died. Jesus died. How did he die? Uh, on a yeah. cross. Good, good. So we remembered when Jesus died on a cross. So that happened... On, we remember that. We call that day Good Friday. Now, why did Jesus die on a cross? Do you know why? Go ahead. To forgive our sins. To forgive, our sins, to forgive us for the times that we do not do what God wants us to do, right? Okay, very good. Now, now it's Easter Sunday. What happened today that we're celebrating, Cole? He rose. He rose. That's exactly right. He rose from the dead. Now, if Jesus, if Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sins, why do, you, why do you think he came back? Do you think he could have just stayed dead? He rose back because he, he um, loves us. Well, that's true. That's exactly right. So, so there's several reasons why Jesus, um, 
rose from the, from the dead. And one reason was he wanted to make sure that we know that our sins are forgiven. So he wanted to make sure we know that our sins are forgiven. So the Bible lesson that I just read talked about the first people that saw that the tomb was empty. And they were some of the women disciples. They were the first ones to come and they saw that Jesus, his body was gone. And then an angel, they saw an angel there. And the angel said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised and he is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. So that was in the tomb. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Now the reason Jesus, um, the reason the angel gave, gave the women this message and the reason why Jesus appeared to all of them was so that they would know that God is not angry with them that God loves them and God forgives them. See, the 12 disciples, most of them um, abandoned Jesus when he was arrested. Let me see if I have. One of them betrayed him, but the rest of them took off. They were, and that's Peter. He denied even knowing Jesus. So Jesus was mostly alone. There were there just, just a few, few of his followers, mostly women, um, were with him when he died. So Jesus wanted to make sure they knew that they were forgiven, and Jesus wants us to know that we are forgiven, that God loves each one of us, and that God truly does forgive us of our sins, the times we do not do what God wants us to do. Okay? And another reason Jesus rose from the dead is so that we would know that God is more powerful than death or anything else and all of creation, the whole world, the whole universe, okay? Nothing or any, no one is as powerful as God. So he wanted to make sure we knew that, okay? So that was another reason. And if we place our faith in Jesus and follow his teachings, we too will live with God forever in God's kingdom. So he wants to make sure that we know that we're loved by him, we're forgiven, and that we can live with God forever in his kingdom. Okay? So those are some of the messages of Easter. Okay? So in many ways, Easter is God's way of making sure that we know that God loves us, that God forgives us, and that God wants us to live with him forever. Okay? So that's really good news, right? Yeah, that's the best news. Okay, will you, will you please pray with me? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, today we celebrate the good news of your resurrection. We thank you for loving us, for giving us when we fail, and for giving us your life. Amen. All right, thanks for coming forward. And let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Psalm 118 proclaims, I shall not die, but live. This is a very appropriate message for Easter Sunday, and I believe for April 4th. 2021. I've lived through a couple of periods when, when some people were warning about the end of the world. The first one I remember was in 1999. There was a computer uh, scare called Y2K. And, and then on top of that, some people thought that the new millennium was going to bring about the end of the world. Then in 2012, there were some people talking about the end of the world because the ancient Mayan calendar 
comes to an end on December 21st, uh, 2012. Well, this year I had not heard anything about the world ending until a few days ago. I think it was on Thursday. I went on Facebook, and one of our members had a meme posted about April 3rd. And the meme asked the question, if we need to worry about April 3rd, 2021, being the final countdown. Because yesterday's date was 4, 3, 2, 1. I didn't think about any of that until I, I've, only, I've been on Facebook, I think since like the summertime, so I've seen all sorts of stuff now. But anyway, um, but I hadn't thought anything about that. Well, thankfully, we are all still alive. And we can give thanks this morning. Not only are we still alive, but Jesus is alive. And we shall not die, but live. Now, I honestly was not worried about yesterday, but I will admit that in 1999, I was still in high school, and I was at least a little concerned with the future and the possibility of some kind of impending doom. Well, the fear of the future is not uncommon among human beings, and we definitely see some fear in our gospel lesson for today. This year, our gospel reading comes from Mark, chapter 16. And the conclusion to this gospel is rather different from the other three. And it's for a couple reasons. One reason is because some of the earliest manuscripts have the gospel ending at verse 8, where our lesson ends for today. So there's manuscripts where the gospel actually ends at the verse we just read today. Other manuscripts, although not as many, include about two extra sentences. And then there are several other manuscripts include verses 9 through 20, which is what you'll find in most Bibles. This fact leaves some mystery in regards to how St. Mark intended to end his gospel account. Some scholars argue that St. Mark finished his gospel account at verse 8. And then someone else wrote verses 9 through 20. If that is true, which I'm not saying it is, but if it's true, then Mark has, has quite a different ending compared to Matthew, uh, Luke, and John. Now, I should point out that for Lutherans and, and I think most, if not all other Christian denominations, we believe that verses 9 through 20 are sacred scriptures. So if you open your Bible t- later today and you see those other verses, we do believe that they're sacred scripture. But even with those extra verses, this is still a very interesting story about the first people to learn about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our lesson begins with Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome. They have come to Jesus' tomb to anoint his body with spices. This was an act of both respect and love on part of these two women. But to the surprise of these two Marys, they found that the stone entrance of the tomb had been rolled away. Now the reason why the stone had been rolled away was not so Jesus could get out, That wasn't a problem. Next Sunday, we'll see that Jesus can walk through doors. So it wasn't so he could get out. Instead, the entrance was removed so that people could see the empty tomb for themselves. Well, when Mary and Mary entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, in a white robe, sitting on the right side. Now, St. Matthew tells us this young man is an angel of the Lord. So that's why I called him an angel in the children's sermon. That's from St. Matthew. Well, this angel says to him, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you, 
to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Again, the next verse, so that's the angel. The next verse is different from the, from the other Gospels and also very human. St. Mark writes, So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now we could, we could make the argument that these women should not have been afraid or all that amazed. And, and uh, Mark, and both Mark chapter 9 and chapter 10, Jesus tells his disciples that the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. At the same time, both of these women and the 12 disciples are human beings. So they, they were given that war, they were, they were told what would happen. But again, these women, as well as the 12 disciples, are human beings. They are all born with original sin, meaning they, ju they are just like us. They are unable to completely trust God. We're all born with something called original sin. We all lack the ability to put our complete trust in God. Now, it is true that sometimes these original disciples were just confused, which is also very human. But even when they were not confused, they still remained sinners. Sinners who often had their own plans instead of relying on God's plan. And sinners who, again, do not always put their trust in God. And as sinners, it's not all that surprising that Mary and Mary were afraid. So afraid that they did not initially tell anyone what they witnessed. Again, it's not uncommon for human beings to be afraid of the future. Mary, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, were confused by what they saw. And they did not know what the future held for them. We may not be witnesses to the resurrection, but we too can fear the future. War and economic turmoil are not unfamiliar realities to us. And now we've been living with a global pandemic for over a year. We are often afraid, or at the very least, worried about the future. We're often concerned, I have at least a little worry. Not only do we sometimes fear or worry about the future, but we may worry about our own sin. In our gospel lesson, the angel tells these two Marys to inform the disciples and Peter what they had witnessed. Peter is most likely singled out here because he not only abandoned Jesus, but he denied even knowing Jesus three separate times. And he does this, he does this even after being warned that he would commit this sin. So sometimes we're worried or afraid for the future. Sometimes we worry about our sin. And again, none of us are able to completely trust in God. It's part of our original sin. We've all been, uh, been born with that. Now, we, as time goes on and we grow in our faith, our trust in God grows. But we all are born with that inability to fully trust in God. And with all that being said, on Easter... We always find God telling us to not be afraid, or as Mark puts it, do not be alarmed. Do not worry. Do not be afraid. For Jesus is alive. Our sins, like Peter's, has been forgiven. And we can look forward to a future with our Lord and Savior. 
throughout the Gospels, both the male and the female disciples are shown to be sinners. Even Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, are shown to be lacking in faith. Again, their, their, their faith's not perfect. They're faithful, but again, it's not perfect. And what we see is that Jesus does not abandon any of them. Instead, Jesus has gone ahead of them to Galilee, where he will meet them, where he will show them that all has been forgiven, that they too can look forward to eternal life, and that God has more work for them to do. In all of our lessons for today, we find people who feel that they may be lacking in some way. It's one of the the uniting themes in all of these gospel lessons, or not gospel, in all these scripture lessons. (laughs) It's only one gospel lesson today. Uh, Peter, Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, do not completely trust God, and and they do not obey his every command. So we see that in in Mark chapter 16. In our second lesson, we find St. Paul admitting that he is the least of the apostles and unfit to be called an apostle because he persecuted the church of God. Then in our first lesson, we find St. Peter preaching to a group of Gentiles who may feel that they are lacking because they do not belong to the nation of Israel. And in all three of these lessons, we find God welcoming each person or group into his family. In Acts chapter 10, we are told that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. In our second lesson, St. Paul gives witness to the fact that Jesus appeared to him and not only forgave him, but sent him out to proclaim the gospel. And in our gospel lesson, we find Jesus gathering all of his disciples in Galilee, not to punish them or reprimand them, but instead to prove to them that he, but instead to, to prove to them that what he had been teaching them all along was correct and to prepare them for their mission to proclaim the gospel. There are plenty of reasons for each person and group in our lessons today to be afraid of the future and to feel that they are unworthy of God's love. And with each person and group, we find God telling them to not be afraid, that the tomb was empty to save sinners not condemn them. It's true that none of us know what the future of our world will bring. I always like to say that life is filled with ups and downs. At least in my experience, it seems like something good happens and then something bad happens. It's just always back and forth. On Easter... We are called to remember that our time on this sinful planet is only temporary and that our future lies with a merciful and perfect God. As we see in our lessons for today, Jesus is fully aware of our sins. He knows that we do not always trust God and we certainly do not always follow his commandments. Thankfully, God's desire for us, thankfully, God's desire for us to, thankfully, God's desire for us is to live. That is God's great desire. God does not want us to die or to be separated from him. On Easter Sunday, we celebrate and proclaim the truth that God wants us to live so much that he was willing to die for us. Not only did he die for us, but he rose again so that we would know that sin, death, and the devil do not have any power over God. And by claiming Jesus as our Lord and Savior, sin, death, and the devil 
have no hold on us either. On this day and every day, we should proclaim the words of Psalm 118, that we shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen.
invite the congregation to please rise. And with the whole church, we confess our faith using the words from the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, as spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. <clears throat> Praise to you for your, for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. We also pray for safety for Christians who live in areas that restrict religious freedom. This week we, we, we especially pray for the nation of Indonesia where a church was bombed on Palm Sunday. And we pray for the nation of Nigeria, where a priest and six, under, six other individuals were murdered at church. We ask that those who lost loved ones would be comforted by the promise of the resurrection, and that your strength and courage would continue to be with all of your disciples around the world. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid or confused those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. And we especially lift up those who are known to this congregation in need of your healing presence. For Elizabeth, Hilda, Susan, Geraldine, Irene, Mike, Martha, Mike, Nelson, Sandra, Paul, and for the family of Blair Harrington, and for all those we now name aloud in our in our hearts. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we, are called, as, as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with Benedict the African and all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God. And the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you. 
trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give the Lord our God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses to the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks again for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Lord, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Please be seated. And for communion, um, again, we'll, we'll start with the lectern side and starting with the first pew and they may come forward. And then um, after the lectern side is all communed, then we'll go to the, the pulpit side. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Do, how do we do that? Yeah, because then they go back. So. 
is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body.
I invite the congregation to please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. And let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.